Hey guys, good morning. Thank you for coming back to Crafty Crafts. Today we're going to be painting. We're going to be painting for a uh, painting for fall. So I'm just going to answer a question that my partner over here just asked me, and a lot of other people have been asking. Why do we use the whiteboard when it comes to painting? It's because in a lot of our paintings that we share with you guys, you can do it so many ways that if I put put it on the whiteboard like this, right? I can erase it and show you guys a different thing. Now we are going to do a pumpkin painting today. And your pumpkin can either start like that, you can start it like that and this can be your pumpkin. That's one way you can do it on your canvas or paper. Or, see it's a lot easier than doing 10 canvases to erase it and draw for you again. And you can do a smaller one and a bigger one. Two pumpkins. You can do three pumpkins. Uh, but the reason why I'm doing it like in the shape of like a heart top like that is because it will be easier later to fill it in and make the little top for it. You can even have one big pumpkin that goes across like that. Because then, because then later we're gonna fill that stuff in, and we're gonna fill things here as well to make it seem more like a pumpkin. So go ahead and draw your pumpkin however you want to draw it on your canvas, and then we'll get started. All right, crew. So you got somewhat of an image of your pumpkin or pumpkins. Right, we got two of them going on here, so I'll just show you the two of them. Now, while we're living that for a minute, because we have our outline, we're going to do our backgrounds. And our background is going to be blue and green with a little bit of white. You can do yours however you would like, with whatever colors you would like. But because the pumpkin is going to be with the yellows, oranges, and reds, and brown, it's a nice contrast to have them different like that. So for the background you want a flat brush and obviously we have smaller canvases here today but if you have a bigger one you're gonna want to use a bigger brush. We don't need this specific brush today because our canvases are not that big. So we're gonna use the smaller ones that are flat headed brushes and we're just gonna give it a quick dip in the water and you're gonna just dip in whatever color you want and blend them in a little bit so i'm gonna start with this dark blue myself and i'm gonna put some of this dark blue in this corner up here The sun's not being a friend of ours today, so I apologize about that. And then I might get a little bit of white and just blend it in over here to the blue. And then maybe just a little bit of the other blue and blend that in as well, just to get a little bit of a contrast of colors going on. And you probably don't need as much paint as we have down here at the moment if you have a smaller canvas like we do. I just wanted to have enough to show you all what we'll be doing and how we'll be doing it. And don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to just dip it in. I'm gonna grab some green and put the green like right next to the pumpkin maybe. That might look nice. And maybe mix it in with the blue up here a little bit. Don't be afraid of blending your colors in. So we're, you're going to do that for the background. With, we're going to do the greens and blues. You do whatever color you want. And then we'll meet you all in a minute. Alright crew, hopefully you have your background done by now. This is what mine looks like right now. And like I said, I really don't want you to be afraid of the colors and be afraid of blending colors and just putting them in random places. Just experiment with it, have fun with it. This is art, it's creativity, nobody needs to do it except you. 
Other people's opinions don't matter. It's what you want to do in your art biz. So do not be afraid to blend them, to throw them on there like that, to, do, to use different textures when you do it, whether it's circles or stripes, or just like I did where I just smudged them on. So we're gonna get started with the pumpkins here in a minute. We're going to put our flat brush, because you're not gonna need it anymore for right now. Put it in the water and then grab, you should have the other brush already in the water, the one that you used to dry the pumpkins with. It's a smaller, smaller brush. So grab the black bag, take some paint, and you're just gonna give your pumpkin a little top. Just a little top like that for right now. And we'll get started again. You can put a few stripes if you'd like. You can put like a stripe here, like that. You can do that. You can put stripes like that if you wanted to. If not, then that's perfectly fine. So we're going to put some yellows, reds, and oranges on a template right now. And then we'll come back and we'll paint our pumpkins. Alright crew. So over here I got a couple of different oranges down here. And I, I got some reds. And then we got a yellow and kind of like an ivory color because some pumpkins have a little bit of ivory on them or more like whitish. And over here with the black, I got a little bit of brown and a little bit of a darker brown because sometimes the browns can be a little addy. It could be a little bit of an addition. So the brushes that we want to use with this one are like the brushes that we used earlier. Just, and you can buy a whole bunch of this, a pack of like 12 of this, 10 or 12 from the dollar store. That's where I bought this specific one. And you're just going to start painting your pumpkins. I like to start with a yellow on the top. I like to start with yellow on the top here and keep in mind that your colors will get blended as you go because they will touch each other or you can purposely blend them yourself but I'm gonna start with a yellow top because I can always add things to the yellow to make it look a little different a little orange or a little red so I'm gonna put some yellow on this one and I'm going to put a little bit of ivory on this one down here, on this little one. And then I'll put a little bit of yellow under that. Because, like I said, some pumpkins are whiter than, or more yellowish than orangish. And that's just fine, that's nature for you. So we're gonna give it a little ivory. And a little bit of yellow. So to answer another question that came up is we use arclic. I use arclic paints like this. And the reason why I use them is because they're strong and if you mess up or you didn't like something, you can paint on top of it this. So like if you did a wrong stroke with black like the yellows or the whites will be able to paint over that and you won't see the black you might need a couple of strokes but it will versus some of the other paints you can do that with if you screwed up you screwed up the one thing i will say about this paint is this paint does not come off your clothes or your tables so it's another good reason to bring it to the park but also, um, I go to the dollar store a lot and buy like those temporary tablecloths if I paint at home. And I will put that on my table and I will get this. And also wear a shirt and pants that you don't care getting paint on. 
because if you do get paint on you will not be able to take it off and these ones actually come in various sizes these little ones cost 50 cents this bigger ones cost between $1.50 to $2 and then for my primary colors I have these even bigger ones that cost about $3 a bottle and they're really not that expensive but let's get going with our pumpkins and we'll meet you back in a second all right Chris so this is what I got so far with the yellow and ivory yellow and keep in mind that just because I'm doing something a certain way or I'm using certain colors in certain places does not mean that you have to because this is art and like we said it's your project you do it the way you want so I'm gonna take a little bit of a lighter orange now and go a little bit of it on the yellow but kind of start going down a little bit and blend it around a little bit I can take it up a little bit around the corner here and blend it in with the yellow up there and add a little more if I need to and then I'll take an orange that's a little darker and continue it down continue it with the blending and keep in mind that nature is different everything in nature is different you know pumpkins can have a million colors on them and they can be one solid color on them they can have spots on them like I'm putting a little bit of this darker orange up here on the corner because sometimes in nature that could happen Sometimes that could be what you end up with. We can add a little red over here to this. You know, it's like if you get an apple. The apple can be green, can be red, can be yellow, or it can be a mix. So this is what I got so far. And I really, really, really do not want you to be afraid of paint because somebody else says you can't do something. You can do whatever it is you want to do. I'm going to take some of this darker red, tiny bit of the darker, darker red, and put it over here on the corner on the side to give it a little bit of an illusion. There's my first pumpkin. I'm going to add some more yellows and a tiny bit of orange to this other pumpkin and then I'll show you what I've got going on. Okay y'all, so there's that. I got the pumpkins going. Now I'm going to put this brush we just used in the water. We're going to rinse it out and we're going to, I'm just trading this color with orange and reds in for the ones that has brown on it and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to wash the brush we just used rinse it out a little bit in the water and I like to start with the lighter brown just so I know what I'm doing and I'm going to go over those lines a little bit because sometimes it can be nice to add a little brown to it a little lines And this is completely optional, but I also like to like go over sometimes the outline of the pumpkin that we did first with black. Because I like to make it more nature-wise, so sometimes I'll even mix the brown with the orange. Or yellow. You can add little diddles in with the browns, whether it's little lines. You don't have to do this. I just think sometimes little diddles help. And if you painted a section darker, you might want to use a darker brown for the lines. Versus if you painted a section lighter, you might want to use lighter strokes for it. 
All right, crew. Here's my finished pumpkin. My finished product. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all give it a shot. Here's the other one that was done today. It's also looking really good. And the background on this one's different. And this is what I mean by you can do one pumpkin or a couple of pumpkins. We just did a couple of examples for you all today. But I really hope that you all enjoyed it. I'll take a picture of both of this and show you them in a picture. But um, please give it a try. Like, comment, subscribe. And then when you do comment, show me what it is you guys made. I want to see your project with the pumpkins. Have a wonderful day. God bless and thank you for watching.